On a typical day, I go into campus, um, University of Michigan campus. I have a cubicle there, which is you know, just a little workspace for my computer. Uh, but the fun part is in the lab. Uh, with the Autonomous Aerospace Systems Laboratory is where I work with um, the members of my lab and also my advisor, Professor Ella Atkins. And what you see when you first walk in is just tables and walls and cabinets covered in uh, various screwdrivers and wires and piles of drones. <laughs> so we have uh, along one of the walls, there's uh, four or five quadrotors that are just hanging there, uh, and they're about a meter across or a yard. It's so about a length of an arm. Uh, and in front of those, we usually have an octocopter sitting, uh, which is eight rotors on it. And on the other side of the room, we have a bunch of wings from airplanes that are a couple meters across. And below all of these aircraft are a bunch of computers and usually a few of my lab mates. And so that's kind of where we do a lot of our work programming of the software and any repairs that the vehicles need. One of the really exciting things that we just, that they just finished recently is a huge netted facility right outside our building. And so this is 80 feet by 100 feet by um, 50 feet tall. And so it's as big as a building, but it's just a giant net. And what that lets us do is we can safely fly our new software systems and our new air vehicles without worrying that if something goes wrong, they're not going to escape. They're not going to hit a building or fly up into where uh, manned aircraft are flying, which is really important because one of the um, hospitals flies right over that area on their way to and from picking up emergency patients. And so we'll start out in the lab and then at some point somebody will say, okay, you know, let's go test. And so that involves us you know, picking up whatever drone we're flying that day, usually a quadrotor or four, and we walk them outside and unlock the net set out the drones, walk back out of the net, um, lock the door so that they don't escape. And from there, we run the software from a little uh, pavilion that we have there. And we fly until we're done. And a lot of the times, depending on what kind of camera systems we're using, we'll end up doing all of this at night. So it's uh, middle of the night and we're just flying drones around, moving them back and forth. Uh, we have huge lights in there. So it's really, it looks like daytime inside, but we're in control of that. It's definitely a very uh, fun process. And flight testing is really one of those things where you have something that you want to try, you go out, set the, camp, set the vehicles down, start flying, and it doesn't usually go to plan <laughs> because you're testing something that's brand new that nobody's done before. And so usually you know, land them and then you do a lot of coding on the side and then you say, okay, you know, I think it should work this time. And then you throw it back out on the vehicle and you watch them fly again. And um, it's a long process, but it's really cool to just spend all your time working on things that fly and then watching it happen right in front of you. After testing, we usually end up going back uh, into the lab. If it's been a night test, we'll just call it a night and deal with everything in the morning. But uh, if it's a daytime test, we'll go back and we'll take any of the data that we were collecting. So any of the changes that we made out in the field. Usually while we're testing, we're, using a lot of, we're collecting a lot of sensor data with GPS, IMUs, which are positional sensors, so it's accelerometers and gyroscopes, which record the, the angle that the vehicle's at, how fast it's moving, um, or how fast it's accelerating. And from that, you can figure out what it's, how fast it's currently going. And so that just gives you information as to what the current angle of flight is for your vehicle. And so that combined with the GPS gives you a very good idea of what's going on with your drone at any point in time. And so with all of that information, we, kind of, we do a, we call it post-processing where we look at all of that data and we compare it to what we meant to happen and what we were trying to fly and we see how close they are. And based on how the intended, intended paths and our detected paths are, then we can continue to improve the algorithms that we're, do, that we're working with and generate graphs that show what exactly happened during those flights. And from there, we started all over again the next day based on that data improving. At the end of the day, I usually... Um, either head to the gym or go straight home and uh, hopefully cook a good meal for myself. Uh, some days it's just leftovers, but other days we get a little bit more exciting. And uh, during the week, it's usually starts do a little bit of writing in the evening uh, because I'm still in school, so there is still some homework expected of me. Uh, but uh, on the weekends, it's really great. I get to go out with friends and a lot of uh, my engineering friends are all girls, which is great. Uh, we kind of have our own little uh, group that we you know, go out to dinner together or just hang out in somebody's house. And it's uh, 
makes a huge difference having them to kind of fall back to on the weekend.